Hello and welcome back to today's English lesson. And today we're going to have a look at the grammar and language features of our model text. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through the model text again. I'm going to read it through and then we're going to pick out any features that we see um, and see how they, can, how they are used and how that might help us. And then at the very end, we're going to think about our whole toolkit, how it's developed from the one we did um, with Matilda. And then I'm going to set you a short write task just to get you to do some writing today. So let's have a look. Christopher Merlot biography from 1564 to 1593. Christopher Merlot, also known as Kit, was a poet and a playwright at the forefront of the 16th century dramatic rena renaissance. While Christopher Merlot's literary career lasted less than six years and his early life and his life only 29 years, his achievements, most notably the play The Tragical History of Dr. Faustus, ensured his lasting legacy. Christopher Merlot was born in Canterbury around February 26th in 1564, and this was the day he was baptised. He went to King's School and was awarded a scholarship that enabled him to study at Corpus Christi College in Cambridge from late 1580 until 1587. Merlot earned his degree in 1584 but in 1587, the university hesitated in granting him his master's degree. Its doubts were set to rest when the Privy Council sent a letter declaring that he was now working on matters touching the benefit of his country. So let's have a look, see what we can see. We have the fact that all biography is written in third person, a biography is written in third person, autobiography is normally written, could be written in the first person because you're writing about yourself, but this is a biography about somebody else, so it's written in a third person. We have the use of specific dates, um, and this is to help think about the chronology of their life, when certain things happened in their life, and give particular points that things happened uh, that are important to them. It's also all written in past tense. And the reason for this is obviously it happened in the past, but even, so this is a historical biography, so it's all happened in the past, but even that where people are still alive and you're writing a biography for them, still written in past tense, it's about the things that they've done in their life. There might be a section at the very end of their biography which might talk about what they're currently doing or what they are, um, which would be written in the past tense, or what they plan to do, which might not be. There's one other thing here, which is a quote, an indirect speech quote, which is on matters touching the benefits of his country. And this is tried, to, this is lifted from historical records. And this is something that you've taken from um, some information that you found elsewhere. And that's this bit down here. Another thing you'll find is additional information that's added between two commas. So we thought about this before. This is like a parenthesis. This is an additional piece of information which is adding detail to the sentence, but is not crucial to the sentence making sense. So it's added on top of that. What we have also are time connectives, and these are quite important because they show the passing of time throughout it. Um, and we also have the use of brackets to help show information as we go through it. So let's have a quick read and just see how they work in this particular part. The nature of Merlot's service to England was not specified by the council, but the letter sent to Cambridge has provoked abundant speculation. Notably the theory that Merlot had become a secret agent working for Sir Francis Walsingham's intelligence agency. You can see how that additional piece of information fits in. With scant hard evidence and rampant speculation, the mystery surrounding Merlot's service to the Queen is likely to remain. Spy or not, after attaining his master's degree, Merlot moved to London and took up writing full time. Our time connective. After 1587, Merlot was in London, writing for the theatre and probably also engaging himself in occasional government service. Additional information there in brackets. 
What is thought to be his first play, Dido, Queen of Carthage, was written while he was still a student at Cambridge. And again, you can actually see that there's an additional piece of information between commas, Dido, Queen of Carthage. Elizabethan theatre was split into three genres, history, tragedy and comedy. Merlot only wrote histories and tragedies. His histories included Dido, Queen of Carthage, Edward II, Hero and Leander, and Turbaline the Great. The Jew of Malta and the tragical history of Dr Faustus were his tragedies. Merlot's most famous play, The Tragical History of Dr Faustus, is the f it, his most famous play is The Tragical History of Dr Faustus, it is the first dramatised version of the Faust legend in which a man souls, sells his soul to the devil in exchange for knowledge and power. The constant rumours of Merlot's atheism finally caught up with him on Sunday, May the 20th in 1593, and he was arrested for just that crime. Atheism, or heresy, was a serious offence for which the penalty was burning at the stake. Despite the gravity of the charge, however, he was not jailed or tortured, but was released on the condition that he report daily to an officer of the court. So, let's have a look at what features are here. First off, we have a colon to introduce a list. And this is done twice in this first paragraph. A list with commas separating each part of it, and a list with semicolons separating each part. Now the reason for that is the commas are used um, when the articles in the list are small. And the semicolon is used when there might be confusion around the articles in the list. So Dido, Queen of Carthage has a comma in it, which if you were using commas to separate them might cause confusion. Another thing here is that the front of adverbial, despite the gravity of the charge, and this lets the reader know where, when, how or the order in which something has happened. It adds detail to the sentence, allowing the reader to know more without really lengthening the sentence greatly. On May 30th, however, Merlot was killed by Ingram Fraser, allegedly after spending the day together with Merlot in a lodging house. A fight broke out between Merlot and Fraser over the bill and Merlot was stabbed in the forehead and killed. Marlowe's. Conspiracy theories have abound since, with Marlowe's atheism and alleged spy activities at the heart of the murder plots, but the real reason for Marlowe's death is still debated. It's not, it's not debated. What is not debated is Marlowe's literary importance. As he is Shakespeare's contemporary and is second only to Shakespeare himself in the realm of Elizabethan tragic drama. So we have another front of verbal here telling us when something happened. We also have a really important one, which is apostrophes for ownership. Because you're writing about someone's life, a lot of the stuff is to to do with them or is owned by them. So you use a lot of apostrophes for ownership normally when you're writing a biography. The other thing is formal language, and this is used to get the tone right for the biography. It needs to be taken seriously and you need to think about the historical importance of what you're writing, and therefore you use a formal tone rather than the informal tone that you might use for other things. It needs to be like you're engaging somebody um, important in what you're saying. It's not like a conversation you would have with your friend. There's one other thing that I haven't put on here, which is the use of words like allegedly, or uh, in theory, or it might be the case, or it might be known. And these are the things that are used quite often in historical uh, biographies, because when you look back at the history of somebody, if it's not been documented accurately, you can't be sure whether or not it's true or not. But it might be an important fact of that person's life or might have a bearing on what happened in that person's life. So if you can't be sure, you can use a phrase like that. Um, it has been understood that um, it might be the case. 
in order to include those bits of detail which might not be historically accurate but could be in a biography without being wrong without being obviously if you phrase it as fact people are going to take it as that but if you put that a, a phrase like that in front of it they know that it it, it could be true or it could be hearsay it could be something that, a rumor so let's have a look at our toolkit and bear in mind that this toolkit is larger than the one we had for the Matilda biography, purely for the fact that we've done that once and we have to build on that and continue to make it bigger. So the first two we have are the dates in which the person lived and the title of the per that the biography is about. Then we think about the introduction leading into the early life. The introduction is about the person, who, the, who you're talking about, the key facts about the person. And their early life is normally their life up until the time they are educated or have finished education in some way. During that time, you might have important events that happen during that or link between at the end of early life and go on from there. You need to make sure that the entirety of the biography is in chronological order. So it starts and it goes in time order. And then again, you might have some more important life events, something that causes change during their early life, at the end of their early life, or leads to their career. And at which point you can talk about their career. And you have this link between early life and career going into their, life, their career. At lots of points during lots of people's lives, there are events which change the course of their life, either changing their job, changing where they live, or leading to significant changes such as the end of their life which point during a biography you talk about what led them to the end of their life whether it was um, illness or whether it was a significant event would depend obviously on the person and then you end with an additional piece of information normally the reason why the person is famous so it's going to hide myself quickly. The grammatical things are we're writing in third person and we're going to use specific dates to show the chronology of the person for life through the uh, biography. We're going to write in past tense and we're going to try and put it in additional information in different ways, either in between commas or in brackets. We could also use hyphens if we wanted to. We're going to use time connectives to show that passing of time. We could use a colon in to, to introduce a list. We could have commas in a list or we could have semicolons, uh, separate extended lists. We can think about front of the verbals, telling the reader where, when or how or the order in which something was happening. We also normally use apostrophes for ownership to tell them what the person you're talking about owned in the person's life. And we use a formal language in order to get the right tone for our biography. As you can see, this has grown from our biography, from the toolkit we had for Matilda. And there's lots here. And that's normally the case because you want to improve your writing as you go along. And the more things you have in your toolkit, the easier it is to do that. So your short write task for today. What you're going to do, I wanted to change it. I wanted it to make it a nice piece of writing uh, rather than the heavy toolkit that we've just gone through. So I want you to write a five sentence story about a secret agent, trying to make it as interesting as possible. You have your sentence starters, once upon a time, one day, unfortunately, luckily, and finally. Try and make it as interesting as possible. What could it be about the secret agent? If you want to link it to Kit's mono, that is fine. Have fun with it. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.